I thank the gentleman from West Virginia. Bribery, corruption, and fraud. Throughout my tenure as a state and federal prosecutor, I saw all of these evils and more. I'm disappointed to say that the words I once used to describe white-collar criminals can now be used to define a federally funded entity. The Export-Import Bank, or as some know it, the XM Bank, has taken advantage of our free market system, an institution that once stood for economic growth, prosperity, and global expansion now stands as a symbol of greed, a pillar of crony capitalism. It does not take a trained eye to see that the XM Bank is exactly what is wrong with Washington today. This 80-year-old institution we once trusted to expand our Made in America brand to every corner of the globe has failed to live up to its charter and has instead morphed into something else. The bank does not maintain or create jobs. It does not support small business as much as its supporters would like you to think. It does not level the playing field for U.S. exporters. It is not even a good deal for taxpayers. The XM Bank has become more like a train with no conductor at the helm, running faster and faster, heading straight off the tracks. As so often happens when accountability is slim, and punishment is non-existent. The XM Bank has become a breeding ground for corruption, cronyism, and fraud. If you think I'm wrong, even President Obama agreed with me back in 2008. Before he ascended to the White House, Mr. Obama said that the XM Bank was little more than corporate welfare. The President is also on record saying there should be a level playing field for U.S. exporters, allowing them to compete based on the quality and price of their goods and services, rather than on the quality of any officially supported financing. You know, Mr. President, great things, the great thing about the Internet is those words never go away, no matter how much you change your tune. At best, the bank is handpicking winners and losers. At worst, XM Bank is corruptly accepting bribes, crookedly steering funds to favorite foreign companies and chilling the market for our homegrown companies. Take, for instance, Delta Airlines. Delta is suing XM Bank because it, it feels that it is being cheated out of many of its former routes. The airline is on record saying that foreign competitors aided by American taxpayer-funded loans from the XM Bank can now charge less per flight because they purchased Boeing aircraft at cheaper prices than our own American companies can. The American taxpayer is subsidizing foreign airlines that compete with other American airlines. Speaking of Boeing and their corrupt and the XM Bank's corrupt practices, following Delta's suit, Congress mandated that the bank perform economic impact reviews on all large deals. Take one guess who helped in XM craft these rules. Boeing, this company that receives 65.4% of the bank's taxpayer-backed financing to help sell their jets to foreign companies, putting domestic airlines like Delta in a bind. How can XM justify its claims of leveling the playing field, creating American jobs, or supporting small businesses with these practices? It only takes a quick glance at XM's leadership to see how we got to this point. The Daily Caller found that fully half of XM's own advisory committee members led businesses that directly benefited from XM financing during their term. Five more members had XM funding reached their organizations before joining the advisory committee. And most disturbing of all, if we can have something more disturbing, is that the current advisory committee chair is former Democratic Governor Christine Gregor of Washington State. Washington State, which receives 43.6 percent of the bank's total funding. I invite you once again to take one guess at what company is headquartered in Washington State. Yes, you guessed it, Boeing. If this is not bad enough, between October 2007 and March 2014, there were 124 investigations linked to corruption surrounding the XM Bank. This includes some 792 separate claims involving more than $500 million. 
The XM Inspector General also revealed last week that 31 other XM Bank employees are currently being investigated for fraud. The, that brings us to nearly 40 XM employees that have already been investigated or are currently being investigated for fraud. During an Oversight and Government Reform Committee during the week of uh, April 15th, the Export-Import Bank's Inspector General revealed that four senior-level XM employees were relieved of their duties last summer. These employees were allegedly steering taxpayer-funded loans to favored companies in exchange for cash payments and other kickbacks. A former congressman is sitting now in federal prison until 2023 on bribery charges linked to bank practices. Another former XM employee was indicted in the same scheme for soliciting and accepting $173,500 in bribes. The list goes on and on. How can we justify allowing a federal agency to continue to operate in flagrant, in flagrant disregard of the law? The most recent of these cases features a former XM loan officer, Johnny Gutierrez. You may remember Mr. Gutierrez is one of the four XM employees I mentioned before. He has the dubious honor of being the first of these four to be formally charged with bribery by the Department of Justice. He allegedly accepted cash bribes 19 times between 2006 and 2013 to help direct taxpayer-backed loans to a Florida-based construction equipment exporter, Impex Association. Mr. Gutierrez was apparently very good at his job. He secured between $1 and $1 million and $5 million to finance Impex Association projects in both Mexico and the Dominican Republic in June 2007. Similar guarantees were also promised to Jamaica and the Turks and Caicos. It is clear, unfortunately, that this is not an isolated incident. It only gets worse. In 2009, former Democratic Congressman William J. Jefferson from Louisiana was convicted for accepting bribes from U.S. telecom company iGate and a Nigerian company in exchange for selling access to XM Bank employees. Jefferson was even videotaped receiving $100,000 at the, Ritz, at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel right across the river in Arlington. When federal investigators ra raided Jefferson's house, they discovered over $90,000 in cash stashed away in his freezer. This does not even take into account the former XM employee Maureen Scurry, who was indicted for $173,500 worth of bribes to help the Nigerian company. I don't know about you, but when an internal poll shows that only 42.1 percent of your employees think the organization's leader maintain a high standard of honesty and integrity, and only 50.2 percent of employees believe they can disclose violations of the law without fearing for their jobs, there is something terribly wrong. It is time for a change here in Washington. The XM Bank is the perfect example of what happens when a single agency is allowed to pick winners and losers. For too long, XM employees have been accepting falsified documents, failing to record applicants' eligibility, and forging mandatory checks on applicants' financial integrity. There is a systemic sickness poisoning this, agency's, this agency with greed and corruption. It must be stopped, and it must be stopped now. This battle may be hard, but it is one I feel deep down that we must fight. We cannot allow this corrupt agency to continue picking winners and losers, laughing in the face of our laws and degrading our free market principles. The XM Bank is a portrait of exactly what is wrong with Washington today, and it's finally time for change. That is why I ask you to join me on June 30th in allowing this pillar of crony capitalism to expire once and for all. Mr. Uh,